Right, hello guys, and welcome to Catran TV. You are joining us um, for the purpose of this, this feature, we'll call it the quarry. Um, it's basically a nine acre, I'd say about nine acres, I'm not 100% sure, but uh, yeah, about a nine acre pit, gravel pit, uh, and with, you know, a fairly low stock, 30 fish, they think. Um, now we did have the opportunity to fish this after it was stocked, which will be you know later on in the year. Uh, but we thought, well, let's bite off a massive chunk <laughs> and see if we can catch one of the originals for the camera. Um, now look, we've got the lake to ourselves. There's nobody here, and you know we've got a boat. We could do all sorts on here, but the reality is, we have seen fish. We've seen fish down in this corner. Um, now being a low stock or a relatively low stock depends who you talk to but you know for me this is quite a low stock um, and no angling pressure the fish are definitely going to be where they naturally want to be so there's no you know there's nobody about uh, pinging leads around uh, to put pressure on the fish to move them about the lake so given that we've seen fish and given that I now know that where we've seen them uh, well definitely seen one um, given that I now know you know it's nice out there we've got a decent drop decent bit of water i mean this actually goes to about 17 foot in places but um let's say that the fish will be where they want to be so we've got a decent drop we've seen fish we're going to have a go from here we'll talk about bait and things like that a little bit later on because you know obviously they've not seen these fish are untapped pretty much untapped so for me personally that throws um questions into how you should bait and what you should bait with which we'll have a look at so the loose plan at the moment is get a couple of rods out there no doubt i've pushed these fish out but we've got a couple of days and you know unless i've got a real reason if i see fish elsewhere um, unless i've got a real reason to up sticks and move then i'm going to bank on the fact that uh, they want to be here and they're going to come back i mean the, the weather itself isn't really changing so the only thing that's changing with the weather is the barometer is going to drop which obviously is a good thing um so i mean it's lovely out there it really is a little bit of silt but yeah i think we're in a good area so look we're going to get a couple of rods in so we'll talk about bait rigs what we're going to use how we're going to try and nip one of these fish and i think it's going to be a case of sitting on our hands for a little bit and wait for things to settle down but uh we will keep you posted so i'll catch up with you in a bit Right, so let's get this rod out now this is going to be one of the longer rods i want at least one rod covering quite a bit of water simply because i'll be fishing for line bites as much as anything else to try and locate these low stock carp now a ronnie rig on a chain core leader for my money in this instance is uh, a pretty safe option um we've got an unknown substrate out there i mean it is pulling through quite clear but we are picking up it's up and down definitely you know so there's uh, humps and bumps and i'm definitely picking up the odd bit of weed but i have found a clear area out there and as i say a ronnie rig on a chain core leader you know we we know 100 percent we're fishing you know something i do like to do is just rub a little bit of the lake bed into the leader um just so it takes on a little bit of color of the lake bed which i don't think hurts us um hook wise well size four j precision hand sharp and curve shank look they're a tried and tested pattern on a ronnie rig um i mean one thing we will do we'll add a red kicker on there just for a little fleck of color but the bottom's quite red anyway so it's not going to be too glarish it's that sort of red clay i think out there um you know quick chain swivel so that we can swap the hook over because obviously they're hand sharpened so if we do get a carp <laughs> the likelihood is the point's going to dink over um you know it's not a massive chuck so a bait screw is going to be fine and one thing to bear in mind one thing i've been doing a lot recently is tying my booms with a perfection loop now you can find um if you just go onto google and google a perfection loop it's a really really strong loop and what happens is the boom itself will exit right dead center of the knot so you don't get that funny little kink 
um, that you can do with a figure of eight you know so it all sits really really perfect especially after you've steamed it and it's actually stronger than a figure of eight loop knot so you know worth doing pop-up wise well uh, it's going to be a little white Mad Bates strawberry white. Now, I do want to go down the natural theme. I don't want anything too glarish, but I always think white is a great option for um, something that's high vis, but also quite natural. So, yeah, let's see how it goes. So on at least one of the rods, probably both of the of the other rods, um, is a solid bag's going on there. Now, definitely on this inside margin rod, I think um, you know it's an easy, a nice, and quick way of presenting something. Um, not too much bait, you know, a good mouthful of food. And uh, going down the natural theme, I'm going to be using a tiger nut. You know, I could use maggots, but because there's bream present i think i'd be asking for trouble so we're going to go with a balanced nut so that's just a single tiger nut corked out um i've been having a lot of success on little mini snowman in solid bags recently but i want to move away from that kind of thing here um so yeah as i say a balanced nut and that's something you don't see a lot of people do guys you know is using tiger nuts in solid bags and i think um years ago when i was fishing bags a lot it's something that i had a lot of success on and something that i'm actually quite um quite happy to put back in the bag so so yeah you know it's a uh is it an edge well, it's a little bit edgy because it's a bit different you know and uh one thing that's always worth bearing in mind is guys when you make your solid bag rigs up for this type of fishing nice big loop so you can loop to loop it through the big eye of the swivel um, get that bag wrapped up nice and tight always with the bait sort of on the top of the bag and the lead behind it that way when the bag mounts your bait is 100% going to be sat prime in position for a fish to come and pick it up and uh, another thing that's worth doing and, and that you don't see many people do is just puncturing the bag around your hook bait that way that bit mounts first nice and easy and when the bag explodes you know your hook bait is going to be somewhere near on top of the lead still so you know in prime position for setting that hook Right, so Krypton Carp. Now, as we all know, it is great for playing fish at night. It's great for checking where your lines go at night. You know, it's great for uh, avoiding problems at night when you're actually in a fishing situation. But one thing that is always overlooked and one thing that is always a blessing to people when they uh, use it for the first time is wrapping up at night. It just makes life so much easier. You can see exactly what's going on. You can see whether um, you know whether your wraps are nice and tight, whether they're a bit loose, whether everything's just crystal clear. Um, and whilst it's still more than possible to do it under a normal white light with a normal monofilament, um, it's just one of those situations where you feel more comfortable and you feel more confident that everything is done properly. And actually, little mistakes like um, sometimes you can go around the sticks and you can and the rod tip can just creep underneath one of the lines and you can end up in prob you know, with a problem. That never happens. Um, as I say, you know, also with the distant sticks, you can see if one of them, if they're leaning in slightly, you know, so that can happen over time and, the, and you can guarantee that it's when you wake up in the morning and you look at the distant sticks and you think, I'm sure that one's buckled over a little bit. With the blue light of the head torch and the and the uh, the Krypton on, you can see it at the times. Right. Good morning. Um, oh, let's just put this down a sec. It's been an emotional night. Um, we have actually bagged a couple of fish, but they've been bream. Now, uh, look, that could say one or two things. There are a lot of them in here, I don't think, because we'd have caught more. Um, but the, but the, the reality is we have not picked up a carp. Now, this lake has seen a lot of water recently. A lot of, it basically, it's been flooded out a little bit. So there's been a lot of cold water going into the lake. That could affect the carp fishing. 
but uh, what it won't do is affect our um, enthusiasm and to keep going to try and catch one. Now I've spoken to the to the owner, he's been around this morning um, and a couple of things have come up. One, we can use four rods, not a problem because we're the only people on the lake, so we'd be stupid not to. And two, he's going to be having bait boats on here. Um, and as this is quite an unknown sort of, you know, unknown quantity with regards to the bottom, the substrate, you know, a lot of it, using the echo sounder and the bait boat for one rod um, just to increase our chances we have done. Lovely spot out there in about six foot of water. Um, and then, you know, considering we've got 10 foot, you know, anything down to about 17 foot. So in short, what we're doing is exploring the depths across four rods. Now, uh, the margin rod, which we spoke about at the start, that's staying put um, and we are literally just going to fan the rods across in the hope that on this new wind, the fish move up here. Um, it doesn't feel too bad. It feels like something could happen. Now, we will keep plugging away. Uh, we will keep you updated. And also, we're going to have a look at a couple of products shortly. So I'll keep you, uh, keep you in the loop with what's happening with the fishing. I mean, there's quite a bit to talk about with it, but... Uh, just keep your fingers crossed and we'll have a look at some products and uh, yeah, catch up with you soon. Right guys, um, I thought I'd take the opportunity before we get this other rod out to have a look at a rig and uh, how to make this rig and it's called the GD rig. It's called the GD rig uh, because it's a cross between a German rig and a D rig. Now a lot of the lads um, from Rig Locker have been using this not just in the UK but also um, across in France and places and um, it's been doing really well and the thing that I personally like about it is someone that has to make a hell of a lot of rigs, as some people will, <laughs> I'm sure some people know, um, is it's quick and easy. So I actually came up with this rig uh, purely because I like a German rig, I like a D rig, and I like rigs to be nice and quick. Um, you can use any of the coated braids from Catran. Um, for the purpose of this particular video, we'll use Hemelion. Why Hemelion? Well, it's nice and supple, it will reset, and you've got these lovely color breaks in, in the braid. So um, because I'm not really 100% sure what's going on with this lake at the moment, um, I think it's a good option just to, um, you know, hedge our bets a little bit. So with colors on the braid, so it's gonna mask, you know, it's gonna blend in pretty much with everything. So the first thing you want to do is take off now it's worth bearing in mind actually that you can use this straight through so you don't really need um, a break from the coating to behind the hook you know like your conventional blowback style sort of rig where you'd have a little break in the coating especially with the catran braids because they are nice and supple um, the coated catran braids so but for the purpose of this is because uh, a lot of people do like a little hinge behind the shrink tube will do it so roughly two inches you need to peel back that's another thing guys about this stuff the coating comes off lovely but it stays uh was a good guess bang on two inches but it stays um intact yeah so you're not going to run into dramas when you tie your knots or put sinkers on them anything like that now the hooks that have been doing really well with this are the algaes from j precision so it's a cross between a long shank and a wide gape so that is what i will use I'm going to go in with a size five. We're not in a, in a hit and hold situation, really. Um, there's no real need to go up with a big hook and I'm going to be using quite a small bait. So I want, to, I want it to balance. Now, as I said, this is a cross between a German and a D rig. I like the simplicity of a German rig, but what always worries me is um, that the bead might slip you know, your hook bead. So this, so the D really serves two purposes. One, it uh, gives the bait some movement. 
you know. So with a conventional German rig, you know, your, your swivel's just on the back of the hook, which doesn't give a lot of freedom for the bait to move, you know, with a balanced bait, which I personally don't like. And two, if I want to bang this out there, I know that 100%, the bead isn't going to slip and the, and, it, and, the, and the rig, you know, the hook bait is going to be exactly where I expect it to be. Um, so first thing to do, whip your D on. Now, to do that, a little bit of a hack here, guys, is to form a loop, pass the tag end th through the eye of the hook and then whip your D on. Um, one, two, three, four, five up pinch the knot and putting that tag end through the hook just helps keep everything in place and it makes it nice and easy then you can pop the tag end out keep your finger on the knot pull and jobs are good on that will save you a lot of um time effort and heartache when it comes to making anything with a d you know so like iqd rigs fluoro d rigs you know anything like that um yeah, it's just going to save you a lot of bother. Now, <clears throat> let's say you want an eight inch rig, which in this instance we do, I will measure and cut off 11 inches. That'll give me enough room to whip the knotless knot on the braid, but it will also, by the time I've done that, give me enough room to uh, tie my figure of eight loop, you know? so. There's nothing worse is there than if you want a certain length rig and then you don't cut enough braid off and uh, you're sacrificing. So always add three, basically add three inches to whatever you, however long you want your rig to be, add three inches on. So the D's whipped on. I'm actually starting with a black section here. So this will go from sort of black to brown to, to a gravelly color. Um, and I'm just gonna knot this knot on that. A couple of times. Worth mentioning as well with the advanced torques, you've got that little blob at the back of the eye that closes the eye up, so it's never ever going to cut in, you know, it's never going to cut into the braid under tension, and also you can get away with a few less whips down the hook because the uh, the blob on the hook, if you like, um, will stop that knot from ever slipping. So, grab, it's all here, clamp that down. Right, that's well and truly on there. So what we've got at the moment is a whipped D, you know, a, a whipped bit of fluorocarbon. Um, we've got our hemelium, not this knotted with a little break in the in the braid to the hook. Now, as I said, personally myself, and this is why this rig was developed, or or you know how it came to me, was. Uh, I am always, always looking to save time. I do like a shrink tube kicker. Um, I think it helps turn the hook with the vast majority of rigs. But I don't like steaming rigs. It means getting the kettle out, it means buggering about. And um, if I can get away with not steaming rigs, then I will do. I'm just gonna get a needle actually, because that's what I'm gonna need. And I'm also a big fan of a line aligned bit of shrink tube now because of the back because of the way that this works um, we don't need to steam it okay so I'm just going to line align the shrink tube so a Catran multi-purpose needle I find a brilliant it's just brilliant for all-round juice they're so hard wearing and I'm just going to pierce the skin of the shrink tube in so it's on um, slide this down the rig and before I slide it over the hook, I mean, you could do this bit in reverse, to be honest with you, it's up to you. I'm going to pop my micro swivel onto the, de onto the uh, fluorocarbon, poke it through the eye, like so. And then what I would do is I would start to look at what shape you want your D. Now, I want a little bit of separation with this one for various reasons. And, you know, so I will pinch it where I want it to end up. So that's where I'm at. I'm now just going to 
and this is where you've got to be a little bit careful guys and please you know if you if you uh if you think that you've touched the braid with a naked flame i mean that's why i like these plasma lighters because there's no real naked flame <laughs> and they're usb chargeable which is great uh yeah, if you think you've touched that braid, scrap it and start again. Because honestly, if it, you will weaken it when you don't even think you've weakened it. So that D is now blobbed off in place. So you've basically got, you know, just uh, a D rig. Line the line shrink tube ready to go. Now that fits snugly with a 1.5 mil bit of shrink tube over the hook. And what it means is, um, you can steam this down if you want to. Uh, it's, it's entirely up to you. Personally, myself, that's enough. Um, and what it means is every time that is going to turn and grab. I mean, I can't drag that more than, I don't know, what's that? 10 mil before it's turning. Um, that's essentially your rig done. As I say, if you wanted to steam it down, you can do. I think... You know, I mean, I've not had them slip, but um, there really isn't the need. And as I say, that the main purpose with this particular rig was speed and effectiveness. And that's exactly what we've got in this rig. So onto there, we'll just put a substrate anti-tangle sleeve. Um, they're similar to a lot of the ones on the market. The only difference with these is the bore at the end is slightly bigger than what you'll find with, I think, any of the other ones on the market, which makes them, I think, easier to use if you have to put one on over a knot that's already done, you can do, um, which, you know, it just makes them more user friendly. Uh, this is going to be a eight inch rig, rig. So I will always measure eight and a quarter. If I want an eight, you know, so if I want a seven inch rig, I'd measure eight, seven and a quarter inches, then pinch for me figure of eight. Where we go with a figure of eight, like so, bop. We'll just uh, give this a bit of a, a bit of a pull. Being careful not to blunt that hook. Trim that off. Anti-tangle sleeve on, and she's away. And as I say, guys. With a little bit of practice, you'll be knocking these up in no time at all. They are a hybrid, really, between a D, a, you know, a D rig and a German rig, hence the name GD rig, and they just work. They just work. You can you know, fish them anywhere you want. Um, personally, myself, I quite like these off a leg clip, um, and I'll just adjust, adjust the length a bit to, um, you know, to, to counter whatever I'm fishing over, you know what I mean? So a longer rig for choddier bottoms, that kind of thing. But yeah. GD rig, any of the Katran coated braids are perfect for it. Um, give them a go and uh, I'm sure you'll catch a few. Right guys, so I thought we'd take the opportunity to have a look at the mix and more importantly, why I've used the mix that I've used. Now, in here, it's a pretty standard mix, but one thing that I've tried to um, stay away from is anything too artificial and the reason being is um, the fish in here for the vast majority of their lives have fed themselves now the guys here quite rightly so are introducing feed now and they are responding to it and they're feeding uh, pellet mainly with boilie more recently as i understand it um, so what i thought was let's not go down the road of funky liquids all that kind of thing all that's in here is the pellet that the that the fish have been fed with i struggle to put any other boilie out than pea fish from mad baits um just because it's you know it catches me it's caught me fish every single month of the year so a few of those in there but not too many in 12 mil crushed tigers and also um hemp seed now the hemp is my visual attraction so the little white flecks of hemp in there i think are as natural as you're going to get the little white flecks in the hemp are about as natural as you're going to get without being overkill um, there's not a carp on the planet that won't eat a tiger nut so i've not gone crazy with those 
Um, but as I say, just some nuts put through the grinder and uh, on top of that, to bind it all up together and to preserve the, so the pellets don't break down, I use a, uh, a fairly well-known black ground bait, which um, it's got a really good amino profile. It will catch a fish all year round. And what it will do is because obviously the nuts and the, uh, the hemp seeds carry some moisture and I did match using nuts in tallin. So that again, is quite a natural um, additive, but it will, um, you know, it's not an overpowering additive, but it will dampen things up. And if you're not careful, the pellets can take on all that moisture. You end up with a slush in the mix. Now, this mix now is getting on for 36 hours. The pellets are still nice and hard. So they still will break down in the water column, but they're still nice and hard. So they'll still be, you know, as active as a feed pellet can be. Um, so yeah, the main priority really has been to give them something that they will willingly eat without thinking that it's, uh, you know, I'm not trying to do something different to compete against anglers. I'm trying to do something that will fit in with what the fish have already been feeding on um, with a little bit of a twist to try and buy a bite. Now, I've got to tell you that it hasn't worked. <laughs> it has not worked, but um, I don't think that's down to the mix. I think that is down to the conditions. So last night it dropped to, well, everything was frozen, absolutely frozen solid. Um, then we had a massive downpour. So we've had already on top of the cold water that's gone in the lake. I mean, I don't mind telling you, I've recently learned that this lake flooded out not too long ago, which is very, very rare. I think the last time it happened was 2007. So it's not, um, you know, it's not something that the fishery really has to worry about but a lot of cold water has gone into the lake. We've had a freeze, we've had a load of cold rain, and I think, to be honest with you, I just think that the carp aren't really playing ball, hence the reason that, uh, you know, we picked, we've picked up the bream. I think uh, they're heavy on the feed and they will feed in very cold water conditions. So, so yeah, that's where we're at. I mean, just to talk to you briefly about what's going on with the rods. Earlier on, we did say we would go to four rods. I've decided against that. Um, just because I think I could have, I could have 10 rods out there. And if the carp aren't feeding, um, then it's not gonna buy you a bite. So we're just gonna stick to exploring the depths, um, using the bait boat, using the spar to say, we've got the one rig out on the bait, which we dropped by boat in uh, around about six, seven foot. Um, and then we've gone sort of like eight foot in the margins and out there is in 10 foot. So we're covering lots of different areas in this area of the lake and we're covering various different depths. It is very much down to the carp gods now. <laughs> um, I'm going to stick it out. I think Tony who's behind the camera, he will have to go tonight. So I'm going to, for better or worse, <laughs> stick it out for another night i've got to tell you i'm not confident <laughs> but you've got to be in it to win it i don't think i'm doing anything wrong the only other thing i could do which i'm still in two minds about is fish zigs but we haven't seen since that first subtle show that we saw from the opposite bank we have not seen anything else happen so i think if they were they could be held up mid-water but uh you know which you know could lean you into fishing a zig but I'm happy that we're covering depths, you know, rather than fishing zigs, I'm happy that we're covering different sort of depths of the lake, which um, is as good as, as close to zig fishing as I think I'm going to get. If I do have a surge of inspiration and see something that flicks that switch to me, I will not hesitate to put all three of those rods out on zigs um, and explore the depths that way. But fingers crossed, guys, who knows? We've got to be in it to win it and we are giving it our best shot. So uh, we'll see how it pans out. Right guys, one thing that um, I struggled with for a long time was finding a casting glove that lasted me. Um, there's loads of them on the market. Some are much better than others, but what I would always find is after 
halfway, you know, three quarters of a way to be fair, through a solid season, the stitching would start to go. That would be one of the biggest problems. Um, and you would get on the actual finger bit, you know, the bit that actually protects your finger, that would start to deteriorate. And on one occasion, actually, I had one go on me um, during a cast and it wasn't pretty. Now, it has been so nice to find a casting glove that is, that's stood the, stood the test of time. I mean, these are, these are solid, these are leather all through. So they're very, very, very well made. They are not the cheapest casting glove on the market by a long stretch, but what you'll find is they'll keep going and going and going and going. I mean, this one now, this is one of the new ones. And uh, I think these came out beginning of last year, maybe something like that. Um, and with the new ones, these work with a head torch. And you might think, well, why would, why would that be? What's the point? Well, I'll tell you what the point is. Um, as a lot of you casters will know, it's very easy to lose your casting glove at night. <laughs> it's really, really easy. Um, and all you've got to do, it reacts so well with the head torch. When you pop the head torch on and look around the bivy, it stands out like a sore thumb. Um, so that for me is actually really, really handy. But as I say, first and foremost, they will keep going. They're very, very comfortable. It is, a, it is truly a one size fits all. So I've not, we've sold plenty of these to all different types of people. Um, we've never had one complaint about them and we've never had somebody message us and say it doesn't fit. So the unisex tag that goes on it and the, um, you know, the fact that it'll, it one size fits all tag that goes on it, for my money is pretty damn true. So yeah, as I say, just a top quality casting glove that will fit you and that will last you um, that will stand the test of time and you know assuming you've got the catron head torch you're going to struggle to lose it at night as well so yeah well worth a look guys right guys so uh, we are rapidly losing light now i've stuck it out as tony and tony has stuck it out as long as possible bless him as well um, to try and see if something's going to happen now every ounce of me is telling me it ain't going to happen with the conditions we've had, with the, uh, you know, there's just nothing really to say. The, the limited activity, we've not seen a fish since that first show. And you know yourselves, guys, if it ain't happening, you can feel it in your water. <laughs> and uh, I can definitely feel it in my water that it's not going to happen. I am going to stick at it, but I'm going to take this opportunity to wish you all the best and check out for now. Um, we're going to come back. That's important to mention because this is definitely a place that gets you. It's got me and I've not even seen a fish. So, um, you know, that's the carp angler in me. All I want to do now is come back and see one of these cracking fish on the bank. Um, it would have been really, really nice to do it first time round in a way, but in another way, it gives me the opportunity to come back and try and make it happen again. Uh, but yeah, what a lovely venue, this place, I can tell you now it's going to be something really, really special. And um, I'm sure it's going to make a lot of anglers really, really happy, especially this one when I come back and get one of those carp. So uh, we'll see. But uh, thank you very, very much for watching. And uh, I look forward to updating you on the next session. So yeah, cheers, guys, and uh, stay well.